we come to the third part of atomic spectroscopy which is the atomic absorption spectroscopy aas this spectroscopy works on the principle of absorption now this absorption is more tricky than the emission let me explain in case of emission you can take any sample and throw it into the flame and make it to emit the light since you are concerned with the emitted light you are not bothered about what is been absorbed but in absorption spectroscopy you have to analyze what light is been absorbed by the sample so how to solve this issue the trick lies in the energy level as i said you different atoms has different energy levels what i mean is this each atom has its own energy levels depending upon this energy level they emit their characteristic radiation that is a light of a particular wavelength in case of absorption i want to do exactly opposite of what we do in emission so the trick is that we have to use the same wavelength which is emitted by the atom and use it as the source so the atom will absorb the light radiation immediately to go into the excited state because whatever light is emitted by the sample corresponds to it energy level so the same light radiation if i use as the source radiation it will be immediately absorbed by the sample atom let me explain by using this simple schematic diagram now if i have a sample and the sample contain some atom which are under study so i have to prepare a source of the same atom both will have same characteristic radiation and hence there will be no issue of absorption i am trying to explain this using the color coding over here i have a sample which i am showing here with the red color so the source is made up of same color over here both will have same wavelength hence no issue in the absorption similarly i have taken a violet color sample solution source is also made up of same color that means both the place i have same atom hence they will absorb the light but in some other situation if i have a different source and a different sample solution obviously their wavelength won't match and there will be no absorption so the point which is to be noted over here is that in the instrumentation of atomic absorption spectroscopy the source should be made up of same element as the element under study so this is a device which works on the atomic absorption spectroscopy as i said you if you have a sample to study using aas then you should have a source which is made up of the same element as the sample under study so in this diagram you can see i have shown a sample solution and the source is also made of the same as the sample solution so this is one of the important component of our instrument which is used in the aas the source which is used in the aas is called as the hollow cathode lamp i will explain you how this source works how it produces the characteristic radiation which can be absorbed by the sample looking into rest rest of the part of the instrument we have one more extra component over here that is the rotating chopper remaining components are similar to the flame photometer that is the monochromator photocell amplifier and the recorder 
as well as the burner to atomize the sample. Remember, when the sample is atomized, it is present in the gaseous state, it has ability to absorb the light. Therefore, we have a burner which is connected to the sample so that the sample enters into the flame. Let us come back to the source that is the hollow cathode lamp. How it helps in the absorption? So, working of hollow cathode lamp. This is the schematic diagram of the hollow cathode lamp which is made up of a chamber filled with the inert gases. It has two electrodes. The cathode which is in the form of a hollow cup. Therefore, the name hollow cathode lamp. And then we have an anode which is made up of tungsten and a quartz window so that whatever source light is emitted it will pass to the quartz window. Remember what we have to do to produce the source light, the characteristic radiation. We have to apply a high voltage between these two electrodes. Remember the cathode cup is made up of same element which our sample is. For example, if your sample is copper, the cathode cup should be of copper. If your sample is potassium, your cathode cup should be made of potassium. Then only both will have same wavelength of light radiation. As I was saying, when you apply high voltage between these two electrodes, the inert gas will get ionized. Once the inert gas is ionized, they are positively charged. This positively charged inert gases get attracted towards the negatively charged cathode cup. This inert gas which is charging towards the cathode cup collide with the cathode cup with a high energy. When this positively charged inert gases collide with the cathode cup, they dislodge the elements which are present in the cathode cup. This dislodged elements from the cathode cup are having high energy and hence they go to the excited state and from the excited state this element will come back to the ground state. When this element of cathode cup dislodged come back to the ground state they will emit their characteristic radiation which is same as the wavelength of my sample. That's the reason the cathode cup should be made of same as the sample under study. As we have one more component over here, rotating chopper, let me tell you what this rotating chopper does. Again, I have made some simple representation to understand. Imagine you have your sample solution, your burner, and the source. The source is emitting light radiation and the sample is absorbing the light radiation. I am interested to study how much amount of light has been absorbed. But the elements which are present in the flame can also emit some light radiation which has the same wavelength as the source radiation. Since both the radiations are reaching the recorder, both the radiations are having same wavelength. The recorder won't be able to distinguish between the light emitted from the source, the light emitted by the elements which are present in the flame. To distinguish between these two light radiations, we use a component known as the rotating chopper. Rotating chopper is a half silver mirror. That means when it rotates, it will allow light to pass for some time and then it will cut off the light radiation and then again it will allow. That means the rotating chopper chops down the light radiation into alternating B. Since the light from the source is the one which I am interested to analyze and it is present in the alternating form. The light coming from the flame is not chopped and hence is not alternating form. Therefore, 
we can set our recorder to read the alternate current. Hence, in this manner, the rotating chopper helps the recorder to distinguish between the two light radiations. The remaining component is same as the flame emission spectroscopy. Recorder has a purpose of recording the light intensity. On the basis of light intensity, we are able to perform quantitative analysis. The change in the intensity of the source radiation tells me how much amount of light has been absorbed which is used for the quantitative analysis. The quantitative analysis here is done in the same manner as the flame photometer. Similarly, AAS can be used for the qualitative analysis. Qualitative analysis means identifying the sample. If you have source and the sample solution same, the light will be absorbed and you will come to the conclusion that your sample is same as the source and you will be able to identify your sample. So here we come to the end of the atomic spectroscopy. Thank you for watching.